Welcome to the last round of presentations at Maharajui 2017. And I'm very happy to have my colleague from Sydney, um, Georgina Casadulo, back with us because she's been on holiday. So now she's back at work and giving a presentation about her holidays. But I'll see if we actually see any holiday pictures or if we are learning what um, she has been doing with Maharaj and her kids while they were overseas. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. Everyone's now had lots of lunch and they're ready to go to something a little bit more lighthearted. So we're going to go through all my photos, my holiday photos. This is what we're talking about. No. So we um, went on holidays late last year. Uh, we were going to a wedding. My brother-in-law was getting married so we decided to go while we were in Europe, do a bit of travel. And we took the kids out of school and there was a, quite a, it was almost a month out of school. And as a requirement for New South Wales was I had to actually give the principal uh, some sort of a curriculum plan for him to approve our leave because otherwise we were going to be marked as absent without any sort of justification and you don't want that in the New South Wales school system. So part of, we kind of talked to the teachers and said, well, what do we need to do to show our evidence that we're doing learning because, hey, we're going to be seeing these really great historical sites and they're going to be learning about history, about other cultures, about other foods. Well, how, how do we document that? What do you want to see? And they said, oh, a journal's fine. If they're reading and they're doing this, and if you have a journal, that should be good enough. So I thought, well, I work at Catalyst. We have Mahara. Wouldn't it be pretty cool if we used an Mahara to, for the kids to create their own sort of portfolio of things that they were doing while on holiday? So I took that idea back to the teachers and said, well, why don't we do this? So we decided to take Mahara on holiday with us. So why did we decide to use Mahara? Well, one, it was for free, um, but two, it, it gave us some, uh, like a structured framework for the kids to upload things and do other kind of, put their comments and things in. But I also wanted to work with the teachers because there was no point in just doing a portfolio per se. It was like, well, how can we engage the kids that are back at home and engage them with my kids while they're away, how do we kind of get that to happen? And the other reason we chose Mahara was because we wanted something that was fairly secure. I didn't want to put things on Facebook and the kids are too young to have a Facebook account anyway. You know, I didn't really want to tell the whole world that we were going on this big massive holiday and we weren't going to be home for eight weeks. Um, so we wanted something so that we could choose who could access it so we could have some controls around it. So we could make some stuff public, we could make some stuff private. So we could have some of that security around it. And they're kids, so we've got to be careful who goes in and has a look at their things. So we decided to take Mahara with us on holiday. And so we set, we used the built-in uh, school scene because um, it was easy, it was fresh, it was kind of cute. Um, and then I set up this particular home page which had the three pictures, one which took you to my daughter's uh, journal or collection, one which took you to my son's collection and then we just had like a generic photo gallery of all our photos of stuff that we were doing while we were on holiday and we decided to put some of the links in as well. So prior to going on we kind of set up this home page and I did a how-to guide for the teachers around how they can access the portfolio, how they can comment on the portfolio, how they can interact with the portfolio, just some really quick sort of screen shares with arrows pointing this, that and the other with the username and password so that they could interact with the kids while we were going on holiday. So we created a number of pages. So I created three different pages for each of the kids. And the first page was for their journal. So we called it Share My Adventures. And the kids could go in and create their journals. Now one of the challenges we found was it's not always easy when you're traveling to get good Wi-Fi or to get any Wi-Fi. So how are we going to manage that? So what we actually did is we got them to write some notes down in a notebook you know, while we were travelling on the tube to and from wherever we were going, just write some notes and then when we get back home where we've got the Wi-Fi, we can then transfer those notes into the, the journal. 
And so as you can see, some of the things can be very funny. They didn't need to be very long because they are six and nine, so they're not massive writers. But it gave the um, teachers an idea of what we were doing for the day. Um, you know, what sort of things did they look at? And then they were able to also choose their own pictures and have their own photo gallery of all the cool things they were doing. So they, we had an old iPhone and we gave it to them. It's like, well, document what you're doing. And it's interesting that David's presentation previously was about, you know, content displaying. And it was like, well, you've got a whole stack of selfies. Are you really going to put all of those selfies on the photo gallery? Not everyone wants to see you do this. They're not interested in that, right? So we kind of helped them structure what they were going to put on the, on the site as well. So this was their first page, which was around sharing my adventures. And it was very fun. Then the next page that we created was kind of the, you know, the learning, I guess, to show what have they learnt while we're going overseas. So this one is the four fun facts. And the reason why we chose four fun facts is four is not a very big number, but the alliteration, four fun facts, sounds pretty good. You know, apart from these are the very important things that I learnt on my holiday, it was just something a little bit more fun. Um, and as you can see, Eleanor, when she was at the London Zoo, she put some four fun facts. And the most important one, of course, was that London Zoo had no raccoons. <laughs> She's a big raccoon fan, of course. And the third one, which is about the butterfly, because she was really lucky when we went into the butterfly house, she had all the glass wing butterflies landing on her. So that, she was just totally stoked with that. But it also gave the teachers an idea of what they were doing. And then the third page, we kind of did an interview sort of process. So this is not actually embedded, this is just a screenshot. But this is me with a phone and asking the kids questions. Where are we at today, guys? We're at the zoo. What are we looking at? We're looking at this. And this was in front of the tiger enclosure. So after we had gone around and looked at the tiger enclosure, I did a Q&A with them. What do tigers eat? Where do they live? Where can we find the tigers? And instead of them writing it down, we were just doing it in real time, recording it, and then we could upload it to the watch this section, and then, you know, it's there. And that, again, is a different way for them to demonstrate their learning, which is not, you know, paper-based or sitting in a classroom, but they're still kind of understanding, you know, around about ecosystems, environment, and they're understanding things around, you know, what they need to kind of present to someone to be able to demonstrate that they know what they're talking about. And we did try to say, you just freely say what you want to say, but we found that a challenge because they kind of stand in front of the camera and hi, yeah, uh, the tigers are really good. So we needed to give some structure around, you know, asking them the questions as well as letting them say some funny things. So they enjoyed that process too. So then we tied it back to the, how were we going to get the teachers involved? because that's important too. And it's important for the kids to know that someone's interacting or someone's kind of looking at their content. And they were very excited when we said, hey, we're going to give you a website. Oh my goodness, my own website, that's really cool. So this was like the um, follow-up from the teachers. So what we did is when we posted new material, I'd flick them a notification to say, we've posted some new stuff, go in and have a look. So Mr Park, in particular, did this thing each day when we'd send a notification, he'd have a map up and it's like, where is Eleanor today? So he'd have like a pin to talk about, well this is where Eleanor is, what has she been doing, where has she gone? And the zoo, okay, was fun, but you know, if it was something like um, London Bridge, for example, or the Tower of London, they kind of try to incorporate that a little bit in the morning about, well, you know, why was the Tower of London built? What was it for? And it wasn't a massive lesson. It was just a little snippet tied back to, these are the photos of Eleanor in front of the Tower of London, or these are the photos of Eleanor at the zoo. And he'd read out the journal entries, and then the kids were providing feedback. 
So he was typing in the feedback to send back to us and then the kids could then respond. So there was a bit of backwards and forwards going on and it was kind of fun. The kids were like, has anyone sent me any feedback yet? Have I got a reply? So it was a really nice way to tie in and involve the class while the kids were on holidays at the same time. So you can see there's some very funny comments from the kids. It's always very, I particularly like, um, sounds fun except for the yucky food. <laughs> you know, and Mr. Park, of course, because he's a Arsenal fan and we're a Tottenham Hotspur fan, for anyone who knows English football, that's a little dig at us for being the wrong team. But it was really, um, really, really good. So I wanted to talk about Mahara Mobile because 1610 was also the release with Mahara Mobile. So we could actually use Mahara Mobile while we were out and about, take photos and create a journal entry on the fly. And then when we're back in you know, connectivity, it syncs the material. So the photos get uploaded to your file system and the journals can then get uploaded as well. Because it's very hard to try to navigate when you're out and about to try to pick the photos that you want to put into the journals and things, but this way we could do it on the fly using the Mahara Mobile app. So I don't know if anyone is already using Mahara Mobile. Mahara 1610, yes. Smart Evidence and Mahara Mobile. Yes. It's a match made in heaven. So, and it was really easy to set up because I did it myself. I'm not. Um, I'm not a developer, I don't do any of that sort of stuff. You know, I mainly work from the front end and help people use the tools that we kind of work on. So for me, the really nice thing was it was really easy to connect the mobile app, which is just on the iOS store or on the Android, you know, app store, to connect that to my instance of Mahara. So it was just really easy. And I think just to take away from the Mahara on holiday with the smart evidence thing that comes on, then it's a really helpful tool when students or whoever's being assessed is out and about to try and capture competencies or capture what they're doing. Video, right? This is me inserting a cannula in someone's vein, you know, and I've captured that and I've saved it and it's already ready to go into the Mahara site for me to then put into a collection or into a journal or into a page. So it just stays in the file section. Can you have, do you see your smart evidence on the mobile? No, I don't think we've got smart evidence enabled on the mobile app. So it's more about um, capturing content, yeah. which is around the photos, the videos, that sort of thing. And you can also create your journal entries on there. Yeah. So as you create that content, then you can then, when you're co connected somewhere, you can then sync so it. if you're using, um, like our mm -hmm. Mahara is, coming from the network service block. So when you're going to put your URL in, what URL do you use? I, I don't, I think I just use my normal URL. I'm just trying to see because... Sorry, can I just want to do it? Um, so because uh, Gina has her own Mahara site set up that is not hooked up to yes. Moodle, she can just put the URL yes. in. You would also put the URL in, but in addition you would need to activate the token-based authentication. Um, that's described in the user menu uh, because your students don't log in through Mahara itself, no, but they, they go through Moodle. Yes. And so what they would first need to create in Mahara is a token, which is kind of a string that long, mm -hmm. and they copy that into um, on the next screen, or here it says local login, but they would actually have a token, and then paste that token in, and then they are authenticated. Okay, because so you're, not go, you're not going through Moodle to do the no, authentication. That's right. That's right. Um, you're still using your Mahara URL yeah. and then just put, put the token in that you had first set up in Mahara itself. And then students are authenticated. Who sets it up, the admin person? No, you, you as person need to set it up. So in Mahara 16.10, when you go to your settings, yeah. um, click on the settings and there you have settings, notifications and apps. And yes. your site administrator needs to enable the token-based authentication first, though. Okay, so I have to do that. Yeah. See, it was totally worth coming to this and particular what? presentation. Yeah. Mahara Mobile. Important because there was the e-portfolios e, um, e up, but this is much better. Like this is. 
really good. This is exciting. Yes, it's exciting. Yeah, we'll get. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's beside myself. We'll get beside. <laughs> 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 well, because we already we were already experiencing staff um, using phones in the workplace for yes. appropriate things. Yes. Yeah. But we haven't quite. It's been a little bit clunky. So yes. This is. Yeah. Well, this is also good because you don't have to be on Wi-Fi. Yeah, you can do it offline. To do your, uh, collect yeah. your evidence and start your journal entries. Yeah. Especially in the hospital, you might not, kind yes. of when you're dealing with heart patients, you might not be able to kind of use your Wi-Fi and do those things. And that was one of the reasons why we started using the app, was because we didn't have connectivity. It was just a dumb phone. There was no SIM card in it. It was just a spare iPhone that we had. But we were able to say, here, just use it. And when we are in Wi-Fi, we'll just connect back to the Wi-Fi and it syncs it. So it was a really useful tool. So. Yeah, that's great. So some of the um, observations and lessons learned. Make sure that the site is ready to go. It's very hard to create things on the fly. <laughs> uh, read the documentation, because I try to do things because, hey, I'm smart enough, so I can. Yeah, so, you know. Um, and instead of, I, I got mixed up because I didn't read the documentation, I didn't set page templates, so I actually ended up doubling up on a lot of the, the workflow. And that's really painful. But if I had set like a page template and then I could just copy this page and copy yeah. that page, it would have been a lot more easy. Um, and make it, su yes, Jeremy. Um, be careful with copying templates and pages yes. from, your own, from your own profile into your own profile. Um, I think because you can make um, pages public that people can pull, but my kids aren't quite ready to make that, do that work themselves. So I actually created the collection with the pages in it. But uh, what I ended up doing was going in, creating one collection and then creating a page and then doing the same thing for Andrew. And then I kind of went, oh, I should have just done that oh, using. The yeah. 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 Um, when a template of your own and you use that to copy it into yeah. your own portfolio, um, you then have to teach them, everyone who does that about connecting notes with yeah. all other level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we only had the three, me and the kids. Um, make it really su super simple. So the KISS principle, keep it really, really simple for them because if there's too many things, too many blocks, too many places to put information, it's overwhelming. They don't have really great attention spans at that age. They just want to get it done. They're on holidays and I'm making them do work. So we needed to keep it really simple for them to be able to easily upload stuff, put their journal entries in, and we found the app, again, really useful because while we were on the trains or travelling, there was nothing much to do, and we're kind of nasty and don't give our kids phones to play games on. But they could do the journal entry while we were travelling. And then what we did before we published it, we kind of proofread it and edit it sort of together to make sure there were no spelling mistakes before we put it online. Um, as I said, internet access can be patchy, use the mobile app. Um, and I wanted to make it really easy for the teachers to engage because that was important. It was a driver around my kids getting content in there because such and such is replying to this and I want to know and there's a bit of engagement between. So make it really easy. I provided a bit of documentation. I had some conversations with them before I embarked on this particular project and then afterwards when we came back, which was in the new year, so one teacher had left our school but one teacher was still there and I kind of said, how did you find the experience? What was it like? And he said, look, it was really enjoyable. It was really good to get the kids engaged and ask questions and then get Eleanor and Andrew to then answer those questions and see, you know, some of that interaction going between, you know, the two groups. So that was really good. And then realistic expectations. I really wanted this, you know, massive journals and it wasn't going to happen. They're on holiday. So we just try to just simplify it as much as we could. And we had overall a really good time because we got to go to Disney and we got to go to Paris and, you know, we did some really fun things. Thank you. And you've got a record. We've got a record of it, right. So now we're going to export that, hold it somewhere and decommission the site because we don't need it anymore, no. So it was, a, it was a really good fun experience and I thought it was just nice instead of having 
a paper-based journal that no one was going to read at the end because it was at the end of the year, we were going to be on holidays, the kids weren't going to bring it back in the new year for the teachers to read it. The teachers could read it, interact with it pretty much from the get-go. So that was, you know, one of the, also one of the drivers was I wanted them to get feedback on their journals, get the teachers to interact, to also prove that we were doing some learning while we were on holidays as well. So good fun. What was the so the teachers, I, I, this particular teacher is very, um, he's a very fun teacher. So he really likes to make things fun and he has lots and lots of jokes and the kids all love him. So I asked him a couple of questions. Was it easy to use? Yes. But maybe not so easy for the really young kids to use. They needed a bit of guidance. It wasn't that you could put a six-year-old kid in front of a computer and go run with it. It was more that he would use it as a group um, sort of teaching time, I guess, where he would put in the comments. Because you can see there's, there's a whole bunch of comments in one section with the, you know, identifying who said what. So he kind of did it as a group setting. We'd sit down, we'd say, where is Andrew and Eleanor at? And these are where they're at. And then put in the comments and the feedback. So that was probably the one thing, is, is it's not really, um, for really young people, it can be difficult to know what to do. But once you've kind of shown them and you kind of sat next to them, it makes it easier. Um, the, the, the children enjoyed going on the journey with us and it was following us around because we went to a number of different places within the UK and within Europe. So it was kind of like the pin travelling around. So that was um, really, um, it was really good for the kids to get involved with to kind of say, you know, what's a distance? Because one of the things that we asked the kids to do was the distance between, you know, Sydney and the UK and how long does it take to fly and then that turns into that whole you know distance conversation and you know how far is it from Sydney to Melbourne as opposed to Sydney to London and time frames and the time you know differences as well so he was incorporating that while we were sort of overseas on holidays. So overall positive but it's not necessarily the easiest platform for very young people to use but to view things it's not a problem it's just more the how do I post a feedback comment or that sort of thing um, but in terms of viewing the pages that wasn't a problem at all. Exactly this with my 11 year old. Oh, okay. I would love to do that. In fact, he's already got a Mahara page. I just didn't know what to put in it until I heard some of your ideas. Oh, great. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'll um, grab your email and send you the how to. It was just basically screenshots. This is how you log in and this is how you comment. So, yeah. Yes, I already am. Maybe we should have a Mahara instance for people going on top of the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll just call it. Mahara on holiday. Look, and as they get older, they become more sophisticated in using technology. So, which kid doesn't know what Facebook is or what Twitter is? And even though they're not 13 and they can't have an account, you know, they're like, what are you doing, Mum? Are you on Facebook? Are you going to show the world what we're doing kind of thing? They're more tech savvy than they were. When I was growing up, Game Boy was like, the cutting edge of technology, the Commodore 64, but the kids are becoming more, more comfortable in using technology and they don't really care if it breaks, they don't have that fear factor. So, you know, as my kids get older, they, you know, they want somewhere to be able to safely interact with other people and I kind of think even beyond Mahara on holiday, you can create a safe space for kids to interact with their friends. You know, that you can then say, well, I don't want these strange people to be able to log in and access and request to be friends with you. You know, and I know there are some clients, we're working with someone in the ed sector for primary schools in Victoria, and they use Mahara as a way for teachers and students to collaborate. And it's multi-tenanted, if you will. So if you're in school A, you can't access the things from school B. And if you're in year one, you can't access the stuff from year two. Because he's creating the safe spaces for kids to be able to interact with each other and collaborate together. And also allowing the teachers to create material that their students can then go in and, and view. So they might have a ecology program that they're running for their class 
and they put it in Mahara so then their students in that class can go in and view the material that they've been doing for that particular unit and at the same time collaborate somewhere else but it's in a safe space because and this is taking away from the whole Mahara on holiday. We're all concerned about young kids, how they interact with people, how do we keep them safe online. Well, you can't keep them away from technology, but it's about maybe creating the safe space for them to go, hey, go for it, you know, because you can keep it, monitor it a little bit more closely. This is creative screen time as opposed to consuming screen time. Mm-hmm, because it's about creating content goes back to what David was talking about, you know, get the kids to create content and then get them to then stage it, decide what's important, what's the highlights and putting it together. Yeah. You know, I really, I really, really enjoyed that analogy, that museum analogy, it was just really helpful. Um, Georgina, the, you were using um, the primary school, which is, I think, uh, one of the earliest Mahara Things. Mm -hmm. No? It's, it's what's the latest, uh, the last one to come off the original. Is that right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a nice thing. It's just, yeah. yeah. Dangerous. It's clean and it's colourful, and I didn't have time really to create a whole new Mahara theme, so we were just going to use whatever was built in, and it's just, you know, it's, it's a school theme. It's, yeah. It's a good theme. So with the dashboard, did you, um, it, does the dashboard allow you just to put your own images in it? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like a just HTML kind of thing. So we just went, while we were overseas, we took these cool photos in the Star Wars packaging because, yeah. you know, my family are Star Wars nuts. Um, and we just thought that was a really good way to quickly say, just click on the picture. Now, if I had a little bit more time and a little bit more nous and more effort, I could have done where you scrolled over and it would like enter my journal kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But we just did it very quickly and easily that you just clicked on each of those and then you just um, embed a link to it and it would just take you to their collection. I mean, David, for you, um, to answer your question, we did redo all the themes. So that one was not there before October 2015. And, um, but the primary school theme in, in general was the last one that we had added to Mahara. It came out of the work we've done on my portfolio at school. Um, because the primary school students, in particular the very young ones, kind of needed a bit more color in their life than what, what we had yeah. for, for regular other users. Yeah, it's a little, just a little bit more fun, you know. You go to any of the kids' websites, like ABC Kids or BBC, CBBS, whatever. It's all colour and it's a riot of colour and it's really, you know, wow. So you know, it's just kind of reflecting that need for the kids to have a bit of, like Christina said, some colour in their life. Yeah. So do your children have iPads? No, we have iPads that we let the children use. Well, because otherwise they'd be just Minecrafting all day and then it, it's like, can I have the iPad back? No, it's my iPad, but I can say, can I have my iPad back? So, yeah. And I did take a laptop with me. Um, yeah, yeah, I did take a laptop because I just wasn't sure what was going to work best, whether it was going to be a mobile device, a tablet or a laptop to do different things. And I think depending on the kind of work that you're trying to do in Mahara, yeah. sometimes a phone is okay, sometimes a tablet is okay, but sometimes you need the, yeah. the ease of the mouse and the keyboard at the same time to do things. Yeah. You know, it's easier to drag and drop stuff on a desktop than it is on a tablet, just, you know, by default, because yeah. yeah. everything is by, you know, swiping. So, yeah. Yeah, I think towards the end they were start, sort of starting to get sick of why do I have to, um, but it, it was kind of a requirement. I mean, look, at the end of the day, the worst thing that was going to happen, they didn't have to, and then we just didn't. But you know, down the track when they reflect back on their holiday, especially for my younger one who may forget a lot of what he did. You know, then they've got sort of the photos to go with the journal entry and they can go, oh yeah, I remember that kind of thing. So I look back to when I went on holidays as a youngster 
and I didn't have a journal and you've only got these little flashes of memories, you know. Yeah, it's more than just a photo and an album on your phone. Mm. Uh, 30,000 30, photos that you just saw. Exactly, and you just scroll through and it's kind of, I didn't make the kids write big, massive yeah. pieces of writing. It's just, just short, you know, a few lines. You know, just describe what you've done. Just, you know, did you have a good time? Why didn't you have a good time? What was good? What was not so good? Um, and just keep it really simple because, like, you know, they don't have these massive attention spans at this point in time. So it was... Um, did you do a journal yourself? No. You're on no. holiday. <laughs> I'm on holiday. <laughs> I think it was good enough that I took Mahara with me. <laughs> So thank you everyone. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight on how portable Mahara is yes. and move mobile app. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Christina.